Book Three, Part One of the Aeneid. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Reading by Lars Rolander. The Aeneid by Publius Vergilius Maro, translated by John Dryden. Book Three: Sea Wanderings and Strange Meetings, Part One. When heaven had overturned the Trojan state, and Priam's throne by too severe a fate, when ruined Troy became the Grecian's prey, and Ilium's lofty towers in ashes lay, warned by celestial omens we retreat to seek in foreign lands a happier seat. Near old Antandros and at Ida's foot, the timber for the sacred groves we cut and build our fleet uncertain yet to find what place the gods for our repose assigned friends daily flock and scarce the kindly spring began to clothe the ground and birds to sing when old anchises summoned all to see the crew my father and the fates obey with sighs and tears i leave my native shore and empty fields where ilium stood before my sire my son our less and greater gods all sail at once and cleave the briny floods against our coast appears a spacious land which once the fierce lycurgus did command trachia the name the people bold in war vast are their fields and tillage is their care a hospital realm while fate was kind with troy in friendship and religion joined i land with luckless omens then adore their gods and draw a line along the shore i lay the deep foundations of a wall and aenos named from me the city call to dionian venus vows are paid and all the powers that rising labours aid a bull on jove's imperial altar laid not far a rising hillock stood in view sharp mittels on the sides and cornels grew there while i went to crop the sylvan scenes and shade our altar with their leafy greens i pulled a plant with horror i relate a prodigy so strange and full of fate the rooted fibres rose and from the wound black bloody drops distilled upon the ground mute and amazed my hair with terror stood fear shrunk my sinews and congealed my blood man once again another plant i try that other gushed with the same sanguine dye then fearing guilt for some offence unknown with prayers and vows the dryads i atone with all the sisters of the woods and most the god of arms who rules the trachean coast that they or he these omens would avert release our fears and better signs impart cleared as i thought and fully fixed at length to learn the cause i tugged with all my strength i bent my knees against the ground once more the violated myrtle ran with gore scarce dare i tell the sequel from the womb of wounded earth and caverns of the tomb a groan as of a troubled ghost renewed my fright and then these dreadful words ensued why dost thou thus my buried body rend o oh, spare the corpse of thy unhappy friend spare to pollute thy pious hands with blood the tears distilled not from the wounded wood but every drop this living tree contains is kindred blood and ran in trojan veins o oh, fly from this unhospitable shore warned by my fate for i am polydore here loads of lances in my blood embrued, again shot upward by my blood renewed. My faltering tongue and shivering limbs declare my horror and in bristles rose my hair. When Troy with Grecian arms was closely pent, old Priam, fearful of the war's event, this hapless Polydor to Trachia sent. Loaded with gold he sent his darling far from noise and tumults and destructive war committed to the faithless tyrant's care who when he saw the power of troy decline forsook the weaker with the strong to join 
broke every bond of nature and of truth, and murdered for his wealth the royal youth. O sacred hunger of pernicious gold, what bands of faith can impious lucre hold? Now, when my soul had shaken off her fears, I call my father and the Trojan peers. Relate the prodigies of heaven require, what he commands and their advice desire. All vote to leave that execrable shore, polluted with the blood of Polydor. But ere we sail, his funeral rites prepare, then to his ghost a tomb and altars rear. In mournful pomp the matrons walk the round, with baleful cypress and blue fillets crowned, with eyes dejected and with hair unbound. The bowels of tepid milk and blood we pour, and thrice invoke the soul of Polydor. Now, when the rage in storms no longer reign, but southern gales invite us to the main, we launch our vessels with a prosperous wind, and leave the cities and the shores behind. An island in the Aegean main appears, Neptune and the watery Doris claim it theirs. It floated once till Phoebus fixed the sides to rooted earth, and now it braves the tides. Here borne by friendly winds we come ashore, with needful ease our weary limbs restore, and the sun's temple and his town adore. Anius, the priest and king, with laurelled crowned, his hoary locks with purple fillets bound, who saw my sire the Delian shore ascend, came forth with eager haste to meet his friend, invites him to his palace, and in sign of ancient love their plighted hands they join. Then to the temple of the god I went, and thus before the shrine my vows present. Give, O Tymbrius, give a resting place to the sad relics of the Trojan race, a seat secure, a region of their own, a lasting empire, and a happier town. Where shall we fix? Where shall our labours end? Whom shall we follow, and what fate attend? Let not my prayer's doubtful answer find, but in clear auguries unveil thy mind. Scarce had I said, he shook the holy ground, the laurels and the lofty hills around, and from the tree post rushed a bellowing sound, prostrate we fell, confessed the present God, who gave this answer from his dark abode. Undaunted youth, go seek that mother earth, from which your ancestors derive their birth. The soil that sent you forth, her ancient race, in her old bosom shall again embrace. Through the wide world the Aeneian house shall reign, and children's children shall the crown sustain. Thus Phoebus did our future fates disclose, a mighty tumult mixed with joy arose. All are concerned to know what place the god assigned and where determined our abode my father long revolving in his mind the race and lineage of the trojan kind thus answered their demands ye princes hear your pleasing fortune and dispel your fear the fruitful isle of crete well known to fame sacred of old to jove's imperial name in the mid-ocean lies with large command and on its plains a hundred cities stand. Another Ida rises there, and we from thence derive our Trojan ancestry. From thence, as is divulged by certain fame, to the Rueetan shores old Tevcrus came. There fixed and there the seat of empire chose, ere Ilium and the Trojan towers arose. In humble vales they built their soft abodes, till Cybele, the mother of the gods, with tinkling symbols charmed the Idean woods, the secret rites and ceremonies taught, and to the joke the savage lions brought. Let us the land which heaven appoints explore, appease the winds and seek the Gnosian shore. If Jove assist the passage of our fleet, the third propitious dawn discovers Crete. Thus having said, 
the sacrifices laid on smoking altars to the gods he paid a bull to neptune an oblation due another bull to bright apollo slew a milk-white eve the western winds to please and one coal-black to calm the stormy seas ere this a flying rumour had been spread that fierce idomeneus from crete was fled expelled and exiled that the coast was free from foreign or domestic enemy we leave the delian ports and put to sea by naxos famed for vintage make our way then green donysa pass and sail in sight of paros isle with marble quarries white we pass the scattered isles of cyclades that scarce distinguished seem to stud the seas the shouts of sailors double near the shores they stretch their canvas and they ply their oars all hands aloft for crete for crete they cry and swiftly through the foamy billows fly full on the promised land at length we bore with joy descending on the cretan shore with eager haste a rising town i frame which from the trojan pergamus i name the name itself was grateful i exhort to found their houses and erect a fort our ships are hauled upon the yellow strand the youth begin to till the laboured land and i myself new marriages promote give laws and dwellings i divide by lot when rising vapours choke the wholesome air and blasts of noisome winds corrupt the air the trees devouring caterpillars burn parched was the grass and blighted was the corn nor scape the beast for serious from on high with pestilential heat infects the sky my men some fall the rest in fevers fry again my father bids me seek the shore of sacred delos and the god implore to learn what end of woes we might expect and to what clime our weary course direct twas night when every creature void of cares the common gift of balmy slumber shares the statues of my gods for such they seemed those gods whom i from flaming troy redeemed before me stood majestically bright full in the beams of phoebus entering light then thus they spoke and eased my troubled mind what from the delian god thou goest to find he tells thee here and sends us to relate those powers are we companions of thy fate who from the burning town by thee were brought thy fortune followed and thy safety wrought through seas and lands as we thy steps attend so shall our care thy glorious race befriend an ample realm for thee thy fate ordain a town that o'er the conquered world shall reign thou mighty walls for mighty nations build nor let thy weary mind to labours yield but change thy seat for not the delian god nor we have given thee crete for our abode a land there is hesperia called of old the soil is fruitful and the natives bold the oenotrans held it once by later fame now called italia from the leader's name lasius there and dardanus were born from thence we came and thither must return rise and thy sire with these glad tidings greet search italy for jove denies thee crete astonished at their voices and their sight nor were they dreams but visions of the night i saw i knew their faces and descried in perfect view their hair with fillets tied i started from my couch a clammy sweet on all my limbs and shivering body sate to heaven i lift my hands with pious haste and sacred incense in the flames i cast thus to the gods their perfect honours done more cheerful to my good old sire i run and tell the pleasing news in little space he found his error of the double race not as before he deemed derived from crete no more deluded by the doubtful seat then said o son turmoiled in trojan fate 
Such things as these Cassandra did relate, this day revives within my mind what she foretold of Troy renewed in Italy, the Latian lands, but who could then have thought that Phrygian gods to Latium should be brought, or who believed what mad Cassandra taught? Now let us go where Phoebus leads the way. He said, and we with glad consent obey. Forsake the seat, and leaving few behind, we spread our sails before the willing wind. Now from the sight of land our galleys move, with only seas around and skies above. When over our heads descends a burst of rain, and night with sable clouds involves the main. The ruffling winds, the foamy billows raise, the scattered fleet is forced to several ways. The face of heaven is ravished from our eyes, and in redoubled peals the roaring thunder flies. Cast from our course, we wander in the dark, no stars to guide, no point of land to mark. Even Palinurus no distinction found, betwixt the night and day such darkness reigned around. Three starless nights the doubtful navy strays, without distinction, and three sunless days. The fourth renews the light, and from our shrouds we view a rising land like distant clouds. The mountain tops confirm the pleasing sight, and curling smoke ascending from their height. The canvas falls, their oars the sailors ply. From the rude strokes the whirling waters fly. At length I land upon the Strophades, safe from the dangers of the stormy seas. Those isles are compassed by the Union main, the dire abode by the foul Harpies reign. Forced by the winged warriors to repair to their old homes and leave their costly fare, monsters more fierce offended heaven never sent from hell's abyss for human punishment. With virgin faces, but with wombs obscene, foul paunches and with ordure still unclean, with claws for hands and looks for ever lean. We landed at the port and soon beheld fat herds of oxen graze the flowery field, and wanton goats without a keeper strayed. With weapons we the welcome prey invade then call the gods for partners of our feast and jove himself the chief invited guest we spread the tables on the greensward ground we fed with hunger and the bowls go round when from the mountain tops with hideous cry and clattering wings the hungry harpies fly they snatch the meat defiling all they find and parting leave a loathsome stench behind. Close by a hollow rock again we sit, new dress the dinner, and the beds refit, secure from sight beneath a pleasing shade, where tufted trees a native arbor made. Again the holy fires on altars burn, and once again the ravenous birds return, or from the dark recesses where they lie, or from another quarter of the sky. With filthy claws their odious meal repeat, and mix their loathsome ordures with their meat. I bid my friends for vengeance then prepare, and with the hellish nation wage the war. They, as commanded, for the fight provide, and in the grass their glittering weapons hide. Then, when along the crooked shore we hear their clattering wings and saw the foes appear, Messenus sounds a charge, we take the alarm, and our strong hands with swords and bucklers arm. In this new kind of combat all employ their utmost force, the monsters to destroy. In vain the fated skin is proof to wounds, and from their plumes the shining sword rebounds. At length rebuffed they leave their mangled prey, and their stretched pinions to the skies display. Yet one remained the messenger of fate, high on a craggy cliff Celano sate, and thus her dismal errand did relate. What, not contended with our oxen slain, dare you with heaven an impious war maintain, and drive the harpies from their native reign? 
Heed therefore what I say, and keep in mind what Jove decrees, what Phoebus has designed. And I, the Furies queen, from both relate, you seek the Italian shores, foredoomed by fate. The Italian shores are granted you to find, and a safe passage to the port assigned. But know that ere your promised walls you build, my curses shall severely be fulfilled. Fierce famine is your lot for this misdeed, reduced to grind the plates on which you feed. She said, and to the neighboring forest flew, Our courage fails us, and our fears renew. Hopeless to win by war, to prayers we fall, and on the offended harpies humbly call. And whether gods or birds obscene they were, our vows for pardon and for peace prefer. But old Anchises offering sacrifice, and lifting up to heaven his hands and eyes, adored the greater gods, avert, said he, these omens render vain this prophecy, and from the impending curse a pious people free. Thus having said, he bids us put to sea, we loose from shore our halsers and obey, and soon with swelling sails pursue the watery way, amidst our course Sacynthian woods appear, and next by rocky Neritos we steer. We fly from Ithaca's detested shore, and curse the land which dire Ulysses bore. At length Levcata's cloudy top appears, and the sun's temple which the sailor fears. Resolved to breathe a while from labor past, our crooked anchors from the prow we cast, and joyful to the little city haste, here, safe beyond our hopes, our vows we pay, to Joe, the guide and patron of our way. The customs of our country we pursue, and Trojan games on Axian shores renew. Our youth their naked limbs besmear with oil, and exercise the rustler's noble toil. Pleased to have sailed so long before the wind, and left so many Grecian towns behind. The sun had now fulfilled his annual course, and Boreas on the seas displayed his force. I fixed upon the temple's lofty door the brazen shield which vanquished Abbas bore. The verse beneath my name and action speaks, these arms Aeneas took from conquering Greeks. Then I command to weigh the seamen ply, their sweeping oars, the smoking billows fly. The sight of high Phaeacia soon we lost, and skimmed along Epirus' rocky coast. Then to Caonia's port our course we bend, and, landed, to Botrotus' heights ascend. Here wondrous things were loudly blazed fame, how Helenus revived the Trojan name, and reigned in grief that Priam's captive son succeeded Pyrrhus in his bed and throne, and fair Andromache restored by fate, once more was happy in a Trojan mate. I leave my galleys riding in the port, and long to see the new Dardanian court. By chance the mournful queen before the gate then solemnized her former husband's fate, green altars raised on turf, with gifts she crowned, and sacred priests in order stand around, and thrice the name of hapless Hector sound. The grove itself resembles Ida's wood, and Simos seemed the well-dissembled flood. But when at nearer distance she beheld my shining armor and my Trojan shield. Astonished at the sight, the vital heat forsakes her limbs, her veins no longer beat. She faints, she falls, and scarce recovering strength. Thus, with a faltering tongue, she speaks at length. Are you alive, O goddess born? she said. Or if a ghost, then where is Hector's shade? At this she cast a loud and frightful cry. With broken words I made this brief reply. All of me that remains appears in sight. I live, if living, to be loath the light. 
no phantom, but I drag a wretched life, my fate resembling that of Hector's wife. What have you suffered since you lost your lord? By what strange blessing are you now restored? Still are you Hector's, or is Hector fled, and this remembrance lost in Pyrrhus bed? With eyes dejected in a lowly tone, after the modest pause she is thus begun. O oh, only happy maid of Priam's race, whom death delivered from the foe's embrace, commanded on Achilles' tomb to die, not forced like us to hard captivity, or in a haughty master's arms to lie. In Grecian ships unhappy we were born, endure the victor's lust, sustained the scorn. Thus I submitted to the lawless pride of Pyrrhus, more a handmaid than a bride. Cloyed with possession, he forsook my bed, and Helen's lovely daughter sought to wed. Then me to Trojan Helenus resigned, and his two slaves in equal marriage joined till young Orestes pierced with deep despair, and longing to redeem the promised fair, before Apollo's altar slew the ravisher. By Pyrrhus' death the kingdom we regained, at least one half with Helenus remained. Our part from Caon he Caonia calls, and names from Pergamus his rising walls. But you, what fates have landed on our coast? What gods have sent you, or what storms have tossed? Does young Ascanius life and health enjoy, saved from the ruins of unhappy Troy? Oh, tell me how his mother's loss he bears, what hopes are promised from his blooming years, how much of Hector in his face appears? She spoke and mixed her speech with mournful cries, and fruitless tears came trickling from her eyes. At length her lord descends upon the plain, in pomp attended with a numerous train, receives his friends and to the city leads, and tears of joy amidst his welcome sheds, proceeding on another Troy I see, or in less compass Troy's epitome. A rivulet by the name of Xantos ran, and I embrace the Scaean gate again. My friends in porticos were entertained, and feasts and pleasures through the city reigned. The tables filled the spacious hall around, and golden bowls with sparkling wine were crowned. Two days we passed in mirth till friendly gales, blown from the supplied our swelling sails. Then to the royal seer I thus began, O thou who knowest beyond the reach of man the laws of heaven and what the stars decree, whom Phoebus taught unerring prophecy, from his own tree-pod and his holy tree, skilled in the winged inhabitants of air, what our species their notes and flights declare. O oh, say, for all religious rites portend, a happy voyage and a prosperous end, and every power and omen of the sky direct my course for destined Italy. But only dire Selana from the gods a dismal famine fatally forebodes. O oh, say, what dangers I am first to shun, what toils vanquish and what course to run. The prophet first with sacrifice adores, the greater gods, their pardon then implores, unbinds the fillet from his holy head, to Phoebus next my trembling steps he led, full of religious doubts and awful dread, and then with his god possessed before the shrine, these words proceeded from his mouth divine. O God is born, for heaven's appointed will, with greater auspices of good than ill, foreshows thy voyage and thy course directs, thy fate conspire and Jove himself protects. Of many things some few I shall explain, teach thee to shun the dangers of the main, and how at length the promised shore to gain. The rest the fates from Helenus conceal, 
and Juno's angry power forbids to tell. First then that happy shore that seems so nigh will far from you deluded wishes fly. Long tracts of seas divide your hopes from Italy, for you must cruise along Sicilian shores and stem the currents with your struggling oars. Then round the Italian coast your navy steer, and after this to Circe's island wear, and last before your new foundations rise, must pass the Stygian lake and view the nether skies. Now mark the signs of future ease and rest, and bear them safely treasured in thy breast. When, in the shady shelter of a wood, and near the margin of a gentle flood, thou shalt behold a sow upon the ground, with thirty sucking young encompassed round, the dam and offspring white as falling snow, these on thy city shall their name bestow and there shall end thy labours and thy woe nor let the threatened famine fright thy mind for phoebus will assist and fate the way will find let not thy course to that ill coast be bent which fronts from far the Epirian continent those parts are all by grecian foes possessed the salvaged locrians here the shores infest the fierce idomeneus his city builds and guards with arms the Salentinian fields, and on the mountain's brow Petilia stands, which Philoketus with his troops commands. Even when thy fleet is landed on the shore, and priests with holy vows the gods adore, then with a purple veil involve your eyes, lest hostile faces blast the sacrifice these rites and customs to the rest commend that to your pious race they may descend end of book three part one of the aeneid read by lars rolander